Right, everyone, welcome back for another video. I apologize for taking about a week off. Um, for one, I kind of just wanted to deal with some uh, personal things around the house uh, and so on. I also just wanted to get a break from the crypto market as a whole. Um, but, you know, during that period of time, I definitely have been paying attention to what's been going on. And, um, you know, honestly, the theme over the past week or so that I've been off has just been regulations and crackdowns on, um, you know, maybe some issues, some legal issues people might have that they're facing and so on. So let's just take a look at it. I'm sure everybody has already heard the news, but I'm going to review this article because it fits perfectly in with the rest of the video. So for those of you who didn't see as well, the BitMEX founders were charged with failing to prevent money laundering. The founders of the pioneering crypto derivatives exchange BitMEX were charged with skirting U.S. laws, preventing money laundering, and hit with civil sanctions as well, abruptly sending the price of Bitcoin down, uh, which it just went down and bounced, so the price wasn't really affected. But anyway, Arthur Hayes, Benjamin Dello and Samuel Reed were indicted in New York, where federal prosecutors claimed the digital asset exchange served American customers while flouting U.S. banking laws. And it reads, they will soon learn the price of their alleged crimes will not be paid with tropical fruit, but rather could result in fines, restitution, and federal prison time, FBI Assistant Director William F. Sweeney Jr. said in a statement. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission brought a parallel civil action. It's a black eye for the second largest cryptocurrency derivatives exchange, which invented perpetual Bitcoin futures that were easy for retail investors to understand. BitMEX grew popular for letting investors leverage their bets by a factor of 100. All right, so <laughs> that's crazy to begin with. Um, doing 100x leverage is totally unnecessary. Um, especially in a market that moves as rapidly as crypto. Um, you know, 100x leverage is literally enough to get rich off of one trade. Um, but that's also why you get all the BART patterns in the charts, which I won't get into. But, you know, the straight, you know, break up upwards of 10, 20% in one candle or downwards of 10, 20% in one candle. Uh, that's just these trading exchanges uh, liquidating those that are over leveraged. That's really what that is. Um, but I just wanted to point out this connect. This article connects in with today. We're seeing that the FCA bans crypto derivatives for retail consumers in the UK. The Financial Conduct Authority has published final rules banning the sale of derivatives and exchange traded notes that reference certain types of crypto assets to retail consumers. All right. So I see a lot of people talking about this um, situation today um you know talking about how oh the uk is banning bitcoin no that's not what happened what they're doing is banning anything that has to do with stuff like this all right futures um so for those of you who don't know derivatives are anything like uh, options futures forward contracts uh it's simply a contract or traded asset <coughs> excuse me that derives its value from an underlying asset so options, futures, forwards, they're all used as either speculation or hedging. So say you have, I mean, the in finance, I'm going to go into a little bit of traditional finance here really quick. So in the traditional world of finance, um, the most obvious way for people to describe this is um, a soybean farmer. So soybean farmers say he wants to lock in the price that he wants to sell his product for six months down the road that he would do a futures or forwards contract for that. Uh, and you would do so uh, in anticipation of maybe changes in the weather or you know anything and everything that could lead to uh, maybe you losing out on what you could have had. So there is a basically a buyer and a seller or um, you know either side of the contract. And it's just to lock in prices to, and that is the hedging side of it. Speculation is just you know basically what's happening in crypto. But I won't go too far. Um, they say that they're banning the sale of derivatives products and exchange traded notes um, because of the inherent nature of the underlying assets or um, market abuse and financial crimes, volatility, 
uh, inadequate understanding of crypto assets by retail consumers. Um, you know, just whatever. They have all the reasons. Really, it's probably going to come down to um, taxes and, and so on. Uh, but the reality is the crackdowns are coming and it looks like it's headed toward derivatives platforms and exchanges. So uh, there's that. Another regulation article to segue into next, as I'm sure you guys might have already all seen, John McAfee was arrested as well. The U.S. authorities accused the former antivirus impresario of invading taxes and said his extradition to America, American soil was pending. Prosecutors accused Mr. McAfee of failing to file tax returns from 2014 to 2018, even as he earned millions from promoting cryptocurrencies, consulting work, speaking engagements, and selling the rights to his life story for a documentary. So we all know Mr. McAfee is uh, on the run. He evades taxes, and he's proud of it, and you know he, he tells everyone about that. He's also um, always said that the privacy coins in crypto are going to be the winners, um, you know, but listening to this guy who's got himself arrested for uh, evading taxes, um, he's on the same side of privacy coins. You guys know my opinion with those. Uh, I think similar crackdowns are coming in the privacy coin area as well. All right. Got another one here. This was on Coinbase that I saw today just a few hours ago. So... Without compliance, DeFi's Napster moment is doomed to fail. I'm going to read the whole article because I think it's great and segues into what I've got for you next. So, when most people in the crypto universe imagine what a crypto trader looks like, they imagine a high-flying, government-fearing, algorithm-loving fanatic trading on a cutting-edge DeFi platform. The trader wants to swap three for some BAT to maximize investment yield based on an algorithm he believes is impervious to market trends. Unbeknownst to the trader, the major source of the liquidity to the pool comes from the proceeds of the Mt. Gox hack, the sale of blood diamonds or heroin. Otherwise stated, the trader has accidentally stepped into a money laundering cesspool by accident. Flash forward one year, the same trader conducting the same transaction has maximized his yield and now seeks to deposit his gains into a traditional bank that has started accepting crypto or even a centralized exchange. Ultimately, the goal is always and continues to be to cash out into fiat. Sadly, the trader finds out that all of his accounts are frozen. Talked about this before. In this hypothetical scenario, law enforcement and regulatory authorities have collaborated and filed a lawsuit alleging money laundering. Exchanging crypto on the DeFi platform that the trader used for the transaction has been blacklisted, and all wallets that have interacted with it have been red flagged. A question for another day is whether a fully DeFi exchange actually exists uh, or whether, despite the name, all exchanges have some form of centralization. For this hypothetical, we'll concede that a centralized exchange has a board of directors and or responsible shareholders, while a DEX has users who purchase governance tokens, run nodes, and vote on protocol changes. The example above is a potential road that might become a simple reality in the future, or is it? The nature of both centralized and decentralized exchanges or virtual asset service providers are the target of regulators across the globe. The future approach is unknown, but likely will include some form of government oversight and scrutiny. So uh, if you guys watched my previous video talking about regulation and imminent, this is exactly what I said. All right, I'm going to jump into that next. Um, but this is the most important part of it, right? Ultimately, the goal is always and continues to be to cash out into fiat. Sadly, this trader we were talking about in this hypothetical scenario finds out that all of his accounts are frozen. This is totally possible and something that you need to be aware of, be aware of if you're playing around with DeFi and these decentralized exchanges that haven't been around a while and don't have a good reputation and so on. And I come back to this because it reminded me of the video I made a couple weeks ago. Bagsy, 
tweet it out. He's not wrong, which is why cent decentralized options will rule supreme for those who give a damn about their privacy. And he responded, retweeting my tweet when I said, everything will eventually need KYC. There will come a time where moving funds to unverified exchange accounts will blacklist that address. Once governments drop the hammer, blockchain makes financial control easier than ever. Be careful out there. This is all still relevant. All right. I followed up with him. You know, he was saying that there's ways around and this and that. But I said, you know, what's your way around if they blacklist your private wallets uh, that you're using to access the DEX? What if they black blacklist the actual addresses of that DEX? There's nothing you can do in that situation. You can't. All right. So what will happen is your money that you're using to trade on there is going to get blacklisted, period. And then you're going to have to verify your identity. If that exchange is ever allowed to continue on, you're going to have to verify your identity on that before you can even get access to your crypto once again. And if your own private wallets get blacklisted, then you're going to have to verify those as well. We're coming to a world where your crypto private wallets will have to have your own digital identity tied to them. All right. This is inevitable. And that's what I'm trying to articulate here. All right. But once again, um, you know, this entire conversation I had with Bagsy here started all because I was saying that Nash Exchange was the best DEX that allows you to trade between Ethereum tokens, NEO tokens, ETH itself, NEO itself, and Bitcoin all at the center. So you, the only DEX in existence that has Bitcoin trading on it while simultaneously having Ethereum and NEO. All right, not wrapped Bitcoin, which is just an Ethereum token running on top, or yeah, Ethereum token running on top of Ethereum. All right, so this entire video all came together uh, because I saw that Mr. Fabio with Nash tweeted out today, just realized Nash is the only compliant exchange with a token of both custodial and non-custodial. Uh, Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, Bitstamp, they all don't have tokens, all right? So as I've been saying, you're not gonna beat the regulations, all right? You're, you might postpone it, but Say you come a day when the regulation hammer is dropped and you're caught. Maybe you're at the top of the whole market cycle and you got, you know, a couple million per se that you're wanting to cash out. But you didn't file or follow any of the regulatory uh, framework that's out there. You didn't, um, you didn't play the game right. All right. When that time comes, how are you going to get to that actual money? All right. Just remember, there's going to be this day where you're going to have to verify all of your exchanges. And if they aren't verified accounts, no doubt those addresses will be blacklisted. There's already a feature built into all of the exchanges to blacklist your address. All right, just, just remember that. That's a fact. All right. Last but not least, I wanted to show this has already happened. This article's almost a year old at this point. Uh, but there was a DEX that shut down. Uh, they had a few reasons, you know. Uh, but jumping into the article, decentralized cryptocurrency exchange Crypto Bridge announced that it is closing down in a message on its website. As I was saying, li listen, this is how they described it. Please note that user verification is required by EU law for all withdrawals. We highly recommend that you start the process as early as possible as verification can take a few days. So now imagine if your Uniswap protocol uh, got regulated right now right now uh, they drop the hammer hey we got to shut down you got to get your money off this exchange and say you have all your money tied up in that uniswap token what value does that token have now the token has zero value the exchange is getting shut down and you know say you you went in all in on it temporarily because you thought it was going to go up like crazy you're going to 10 extra money real quick all right well now all your money's tied up in uniswap garbage token and the exchange has just been outlawed and that they're requiring all users to um, verify their identity before they can withdraw their money. This is the world that is inevitable. So all I want to do is point it out to you. Okay. So, uh, yep, that's pretty much all I got for you. You know, I said the company cites market conditions, increasing strict regulation and lack of funds is reason for the decision to close. So, the hammer can come at any moment, and if all your money's tied up in the token, the underlying token of an exchange, and it's not compliant like Nash, 
then there you go. You know what happens next. So I hope I can bring some of this to your attention, bring it to the surface, bring it to light, um, because, you know, this anarchist idea in crypto, this, uh, oh, we don't need any of the banks or governments, this and that. Um, you know, the technology itself just allows them to have more control over the population's money and identities and everything. So um, as bad as it may seem, you know, I think the truth is we are moving into a world that is more regulated than less regulated as people might want. All right. That's not what I'm asking for. I just think it's the reality. So uh, hope that was a very informative video for you. Hopefully uh, can bring some important things to your attention. So, but that's it. As always, please like and subscribe, share with your friends and family, and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. What is a cashless society? What does it actually mean in a literal or high level sense? Money will become like these relics of a different age and will only be found in places like this in other words hard cash will disappear it will become electronic transferred by things like these then tracy is in beijing to show us what a nearly cashless society actually looks like then good morning Mobile payment transactions in China reached a cumulative total of 277.4 trillion RMB in 2018, ranking number one in the world, according to the recently released statistical report on internet development in China. As of June 2019, online payment users in the country reached 633 million. The cashless society is now approaching. When's the last time you paid with cash? Well, chances are cash has taken a backseat to the plastic in your wallet and smartphone pay apps. Denver 7's Ryan Luby explains the digital pay revolution and why not everyone is on board. The cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society, the cashless society is now approaching. The cashless society. <laughs>